Good morning, church. Welcome to the worship of God here with a Center Congregational Church. We are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ located in Linfield, Massachusetts. I'm Reverend Nancy Roteman coming to you from my home in Andover, Massachusetts, and I want to welcome you all here to worship this morning. Friends, you may not realize that, that Easter is not just a day. Easter is a season of eight Sundays that lasts from Easter morning until Pentecost Sunday, a time when we celebrate the spirit of Christ in the church as the presence of Jesus' ongoing work in the world. During the Easter season, we will hear about Jesus' message about what is truly the heart of the matter in our lives. We will gather um, each week around a meal. You can make breakfast. I have my uh, waffle here with some uh, strawberries and a little powdered sugar for good measure. We will incorporate eating together as we break bread and break open the word of God and break open our lives with each other. We will, we will be incorporating all ages in the service, and so this will be a great way to bring everyone together to share it with loved ones who may be with you in your homes. But we would also love for you to invite anyone that you really miss and wish, wish, wish was at your table, such as loved ones, family, or friends who are um, far from you across the miles. So I encourage you to press pause here if you are not yet ready for worship. Take a moment to gather your breakfast or a snack, a candle to light, and your worry stones or another prayer object. And if you don't have one yet, don't worry. You can make one before next week's service. While you are preparing, you can play our theme music by following the link that will show on your screen and is in the comments below this worship video. Ziggy Marley's Love is My Religion. During the Easter season, we remember that Jesus' spirit lives on in each one of us. In the Bible, the early church was described in this way. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. This passage comes to us from the second chapter of Acts, verses 46 and 47. So over the next few weeks, we are following our ancestors' tradition. We are creating a temple of worship in our hearts, whether we can be together physically or not by sharing in words and music and breathing and eating and moving together, we will stay connected. The earliest Christians worshiped in their homes before they had churches, and so will we, until we can meet again in our sanctuary. Because at the heart of the matter, we are connected through the Spirit who makes us one in love. We're going to center our hearts as one to begin. Let's take a deep breath together. I invite you to place your hand on your heart and let's lightly tap together in a slow heartbeat rhythm. Holy living God, heartbeat of creation. Help us to take this time to center on you, for you made us, you gave us life, and you continue to be with us every moment, every breath, every step. Hear this assurance from God. Be still. 
Oh, heart, you're not alone. Your beat is shared with me. take another deep breath. Make sure our shoulders and any tension we feel in our bodies is letting go with the breath. Let's take another one. Let's pick up our heart stone sometimes called a worry stone. I've made a heart on mine. I've put it on with marker because that's what I could find at home right now. And let our touch on its surface remind us that God's touch is within us, between us and around us. As close and real as this object is in our hands right now, is that this is how close love is to us always. Let us imagine letting go of our worries for now into God's heart of love. We offer a prayer song of letting go. Into your care we offer now. Our worries, fears, and strife, we turn to you and know you're near, your light, our love, and love. Let's light our candles now and set our worry stones next to it. And we'll sing together, God bless our homes. Open now our hearts 
together with food to nourish our bodies, even as we nourish our souls together in worship. This is very much what our spiritual ancestors did as they gathered in those early days in houses. They would bring what they had and share with each other. It's no wonder that potluck is in our Christian DNA. Let us play, pray this repeat after me prayer. Holy peace giver, we gather in your name, invited by Jesus, bound together with your spirit, in union with each other. Feed our bodies and our spirits with your comforting presence so that we might be your comfort to others. Bless this food and break open our hearts. Bless this drink and pour out your love. Amen. And now I invite you to pick up something from the table and let us say the one word that is at the heart of the matter in every blessing we do at our tables, repeating after me, grateful. Let us begin to break bread while we break open the word in our scriptures. Good morning, Center Church friends. Let us hear the word of God. This week we read a passage from the account of the Acts of the Apostles that is a wonderful reminder that death is not the final word. God raised him up. God freed him from death's dreadful grip since it was impossible for death to hang on to him. David says about him, I foresaw that the Lord was always with me because he is at my right hand and I won't be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my body will live in hope because you won't abandon me to the grave nor permit your Holy One to experience decay. You have shown me the paths of life. Your presence fills me with happiness. The David referenced in this passage is David the psalmist. So let us hear from the 16th Psalm. You, Lord, are my portion, my cup. You control my destiny. The property lines have fallen beautifully for me. Yes, I have a lovely home. I will bless the Lord who advises me, even as I am instructed. In the depths of my mind, I always put the Lord in front of me. I will not stumble because God is on my right side. That's why my heart celebrates and my mood is joyous. Yes, my whole body will rest in safety because you won't abandon my life to the grave. You won't let your faithful follower see the pit. You teach me the way of life in your presence is total celebration. Beautiful things are always in your right hand. Amen. It may feel odd to have moved into the season of Easter, a season of celebration in the midst of these difficult times. Perhaps it is an opportunity to really take into consideration that at the heart of our Christian faith, we are called to live our lives in the belief that death is not the final word. This is why Christians are called Easter people. The tomb becomes the womb of new life. What would we do differently if we really believed that we are loved beyond all endings? That there was nothing to fear. Today we imagine Jesus at our right hand, 
counseling us throughout our days with these words. Peace be with you. This is what he did when he appeared to the disciples after his resurrection. They were locked in a room fearing for their lives. Sound familiar? Let's let Jesus speak those words of comfort to us as well. Here's how the story from the Gospel of John goes. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said, that, said to them again, peace be with you. As Abba, God, sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Two things Jesus wanted the disciples to have in their moment of fear was peace and the Spirit. Taking a breather is one way to see what Jesus offered to them. He wanted them to take his breath so that they would feel his Spirit living in them. To me, taking a breather is the adult version of a timeout. The difference is that often children are put into time out, whereas taking a breather can be asked for and exercised on our own behalf when we truly need it. In this time of together apart, the same restrictions are creating a couple of vastly different scenarios. We have those who have a whole lot of apart, living completely isolated and alone. And we have those who are having so much together, they have to be creative about how they achieve a part. Many of you live alone and you have kept so much company with yourself that the presence of Jesus' spirit living in you is a welcome reminder that you are never truly alone. The spirit of the risen Christ is within you and accompanying you through this time apart. The Spirit of Christ in you is the Spirit of Christ that dwells between us, making us one body, one spirit. When you tap into the source of love and knowing within you by taking a breather and praying, you are connecting to all of us who make up the rest of the body, those of us bound to you in love. Taking a breather might also, if allowed, be the moments you are able to experience outside, walking and breathing and remembering that you are part of a larger whole of God's creation as well. Wendell Berry knew the peace that this affords and put that peace into words in his poem, The Peace of Wild Things. When despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound, in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. For those of you who reside with others, whether your children or your kids with your parents, siblings, or whoever, time alone to encounter the spirit of Christ within you and reside in the peace that he offers may be minimal to non-existent. Yeah, 
It is in these circumstances that taking a breather may be absolutely necessary for your own peace of mind and heart and your own need to recharge, to fill up so that you can continue on. Asking for and making time for your own space to breathe in Christ's peace is essential if you are to breathe out Christ's love. If you are able to care for your own spirit and the spirits of those with whom you live. So before we turn to Lorraine to lead our discussion, I invite you to lean over and whisper towards someone, peace be with you. If you have several people around the table, let it go around like when we play telephone, passing it around to the next person when it gets to you. Peace be with you. And if you are alone, I invite you to text someone right now that you want to share the peace of Christ with. Or if you don't usually use text, plan to call when this worship is over and tell someone, peace be with you. Our theme scripture says, they ate their food with glad and generous hearts. One way we can be glad and generous is to share how we are finding strength and hope and love and peace in these challenging days. This is a part of breaking bread with one another. As we break open our hearts to one another. This week, since Jesus said that he wanted us to feel peace, let's talk a little bit about peace. What sights and sounds and words and actions are bringing you peace this week? Are you listening to music or your favorite podcast? Are you cuddling up with a book that you've been longing to read but not had the time? Are you connecting with nature? Did you watch yesterday's snowfall with bewilderment and amazement all at the same time? Have you taken a walk or tended to your garden? Have you heard the birds singing maybe yesterday or Friday night you made a worry stone? Maybe you held it in your hand. Maybe yours says hope or love or grace or faith or peace. Or maybe yours has a picture, something you've painted on. We'd love for you to share those with us as well. So what things are acting as a whisper in your ear saying, peace be with you, as we might if we were together in the sanctuary? When have you felt this week? Peace in your heart. Or if you haven't experienced much peace, what do you have in your memory that brings you peace? Do you have a spot that you think of? A place that you go in your mind that you love? Maybe it's a place up north that you visit with your family. Maybe it's a place in your home that's comfortable for you. Maybe it's the beach or the woods. Let's take some time now to consider at your tables at home what these things are. You can talk for a few minutes with each other about them, or if you're alone, perhaps you can take a few minutes to think about them. And if you want to share some of them with us at coffee hour this morning at 11, we would absolutely delight in that. Another thing I thought of is perhaps you could jot them down to use as a resource later when you're feeling less hopeful or less peaceful. So I encourage you to pause the video now and take some time to think about what brings you peace.
difficult in this moment not to be near some of the people we love and might be worried about. Take a moment where you are and say out loud the names of the people you wish were right there next to you at your table today. As we name them, they are present with us in our hearts. We also want to call to mind the people we cannot name, whose names we do not know, but we know they need our prayers and God's comfort. For those who have lost loved ones, and this means all of us, as we remember Earl and Stephen Richard and pray for Doreen and Glenn and their whole family. And we pray for Karen and her ongoing struggle. And we give praise to God for each positive step she makes towards recovery. And we keep her whole family in our prayers. And we pray for everyone else who is sick and recovering for those who are caring for a loved one who is sick at home, for those who are caring for persons in medical care, we pray for all our caregivers. We pray for those who are separated from loved ones, even us. We pray for those who are feeling alone and isolated. for those who are helping and are so very tired, for those who are struggling to find friends, food and comfort, for those who are afraid. Let us take another breath of spirit as our amen. We know that God sends out our prayers and the spirit, the breath of God is blowing from within us outward as a spirit of compassion and presence. Oh God, may it be so. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. Can we decide together, Center Church, to send out some peace into the world this week. Peace that the world needs so desperately, a message it really needs to hear right now. Jesus said to his disciples, peace I leave with you, peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you, but as I give to you. Let your heart not be troubled, nor let it be afraid, this was his farewell message to his disciples. This is what he said to them, even though he knew what was to come. He knew that he would suffer. He knew that he would be persecuted. And he knew that he would die. He knew, yet he was so bold in offering them this peace. This peace that surpassed all understanding peace that was not of human realm, but of heavenly realm. In our house, we've been saying the Lord's Prayer daily, and I keep coming back to the words, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And so how are we partners with God in that? How do we assure that God's will and God's work are done? Some people are making masks. Some people are collecting food. Some people are giving of their time and their treasure and their resources to help others, even in this very challenging time. Yet there's so much unrest in our human nature, right? When we come to trials or tribulations, it's really very natural to feel anxiety and worry and fear. But these emotions can hold us back from interacting from one another, 
from finding joy in our partners or in our work. However, when we fight those natural feelings in this good fight of faith and persevere in spite of what is happening around us, there can be everlasting peace within us. Perhaps you will decide to create a way to let more peace in and to let more people know about the peace that you are feeling, that message of Christ, that they are not alone, that you will be here for them, that peace is around them. What can we do in our households, in our family, in our relationships, even with those whom we cannot be with right now? How can we offer peace to those who are working so hard right now? How can we offer peace to those who are without it? Make your own plan. Maybe it's something that you spoke about earlier when you talked at your table about things that bring you peace. Maybe it's one of the things I just mentioned. Maybe it's using the template that came in the email about making a virtual hug and sending it off to a loved one, a family member, here are a couple that we made this week, to remind them that even in this time apart, we are still together. Having shared time broken bread and learn some ways to have goodwill today it is time to praise god and raise our endorphin levels to improve our heart health both physically and spiritually so whether your dance is in your bed in your chair or all over your living room it's time to start the easter season dance party if you're going to dance standing up go ahead and get ready and let's start with this affirmation. Repeating after me with some energy. Come on, you can do it. We know Jesus is present among us. Even in this very home, we will not let fear be louder than love. But with glad hearts and rejoicing souls, we will sing God's praise. For we are Easter people. And so with these words, friends, I send you into a time of praise and dancing. As we close this time together, remember God is always with you. No matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way, God is right beside you whispering, be spirit with you. Guiding and directing your path. So do not live in fear, but in joy. Take heart. This is the heart of the matter. Amen. Let's get on the peace train and head to the dance party.